Hello everybody and welcome to Board Game Inquisition where we are fans of board games both new and old. Today we're going to be unboxing Papua um, which is from Javier Garcia and Diego Ibanez. Hopefully that's not a terrible pronunciation. Um, and from publisher, well, it says Devere here but it actually has come from Cosmos Games so I'd like to thank them for sending me this review copy. Um, right, so what do I know about Papua? Um, I think it's an exploration game and I'm basing this on the cover art um, which is definitely quite tribal, you know, looks very Rudyard Kipling, you know, Jungle Book kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, let's see what's inside the box. Have you played it? Maybe you can tell me a little bit about it. Um, I would love to know more, but um, I, I do really like the cover. I like the fact that some of this is raised up so it's shiny and then some of it is flat so, and it's a really nice feeling box. So um, let's see, how many players is it for? It's always a good question. So it's for two to four players. It take, it's for ages 10 plus and it's supposed to take about 75 minutes to play. All right, let's check out the back. Woo. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna have a really long board. Oh look, there are like little player um, hidden area things to hide your stuff behind. Okay, so secretive information. Um, and it says basically lead your own scientific expedition, face dangers, manage your team and make sure to gather the most spectacular collection of discoveries to earn prestige and dazzle the world. Well, yeah, that's very much what the cover kind of implied, isn't it? It looks good. It looks interesting. There's definitely a lot of pieces to it. Okay, so let's see what's inside the box. It's not a very big box. It's square, but it's a smaller than your average square. Ah! Looks kind of empty when you open it up, doesn't it? But I suppose not every game has to have, you know, all, all the components. But there are actually a lot of things in this bag. But I'm going to start with the dice. Because dice... Okay, so they're in a crinkly packet. Meaning they'll go back in now without a packet. Here are the crinkles. Oh, don't let me get... There we go. folks that it really happened on screen. We'll have a look at some of the dice that are here um, and the reason that they attract me is I love these big white chunky dice here Mal um, but also they have like a special symbol so this is a skull Ooh, on the middle than that they're normal dice. There is a variety of them um, a good number of them so obviously we're going to be doing some dice rolling. I will reacquire the rest of them later that's what I get for you know pushing a bag but there we go so there's some nice dice so these look like player screens. Now at least this one is a zip bag so I can put back in. Let's see what we get. So are they all the same? I think they are. They're just in different colours. You can see them all the colours. So fragile. So it's basically like your home base, right? Where you're storing all your stuff. Oh, and on the back it's actually got information. I love when they do that. So it looks like there's space maybe for different things here. And then victory points for five of the same colour. This is what I'm guessing at. Looks like the same for gathering sets. For gathering sets of colours. I assume rosettes are victory points, so usually they are. A meeple is worth a rosette, hearts, so oh, hearts, fish. Okay, this is exciting actually. I really like set collection games, um, especially when they're combined with other things because otherwise it can be kind of basic, but this looks like fun. So obviously this is four players. Red would be my choice of colour. Um, okay, next up, if I want to click, there we go. So we get a whole pile of bags. I love when games are considered like that. And um, this must be for all of these, um, which are all in those bags that I will not try and open by hand. <laughs> so we'll see anyway what's inside. So we'll go, we got meeples in each of the colors. So at least open one bag and where's the blue bag? I love the primary colors. Um, I'm sure they're terrible for people with color blindness. They usually are, but they uh, look super bright here. So hopefully there's a way maybe to distinguish between the colours other than just by, you know, having to look at them. Maybe there's patterns or something. Let's see what quality maples we've got and I will use my scissors. I'll be a grown up. See, that just doesn't have the same fun level. There we go. And they are very much standard wooden maple fair. They're a little tubbier than most. Look at that. Their legs are kind of spread out. Maybe they'll stand better. Do they look different than regular meeples to you? Do they definitely look like a little tubby meeple. Like that's not a terrible thing. And you know what? I'll put them in one of these bags because that would be intelligent. Okay, so what else is down here? There's a bag with all these nice little symbols. We'll get to that now in a second. So there's the rosettes anyway. So there's one, it looks like there's one for each color. Look at me keep talking to you while I'm trying to distract you from the fact that I need to put the meeples into a, a new home. There we go. That has the red player mostly set up. 
don't want to lose anything else today. Right, so now let's look at all these little bits because these looks like where all the elegant and nice things are. Keep everything nice on the screen. Yes, this bag's resealable. So what do we got? Ooh, some creepy houses. It looks like there's one for each color. If you can see those. So these are really nice components, by the way. They're lovely um, and chunky wooden. They're very cute. I love the pictures. I also like the fact I don't have to sticker them. Normally I have to sticker things. So these must be a way, obviously, of tracking, you know, your victory or whatever it is you're doing in the game. Okay, now. What was in this bag? Oh, this was a bag with the stuff of the other bag. So the dice can have a temporary home. Okay, cards. Oh, uh, yes. This is how I judge the quality of a fine game or not. Does it have one of these? Yes, it does. Will it work? Oh, there we go. That's how it should be. No, it shouldn't snap. But anyway, there we go. Make it the whole way around. Okay, first thought. These cards feel lovely. They're super, super nice. I seem to have already damaged one though. Just a little bit. So they all have spider um, binoculars on the back. What's on the front? So what are they? Hmm, okay. So considering the territory, advance your hook token one space and collect the indicated number of explorers. Okay, so they're just, well, they're basically action cards. Um, it's interesting actually, you see the background and the artwork is like a copybook page. So it's like your notebook, which is nice. They've got equals and pluses and minuses on them. Don't know what that means. Some of them are negative. Interesting. They're nice. Um, the artwork is nice too. It's very of the time, isn't it? Um, and then the tribal stuff's actually quite impressive. Look at that. It looks really good. So I've no idea how this is going to work because sometimes dealing with tribes can be a very kind of sensitive thing. You know, dealing with other cultures, you've got to be really sensitive to stuff like that. You can't just say and do whatever it is you like. Um, now, let's see. Can I get the game book, the rule book out of here? Ugh. Oh, just what I spotted. See the side of the box when it's open. It's got all this lovely artwork down the side. It's beautiful, isn't it? That's a really nice touch. Ah, that's why it's so heavy. There are things to be popped out. Okay, so what's the rule book like? First off, it's the same size as the box, which is kind of awkward. It's on nice enough paper. It's thick and shiny. List the components, the objective of the game, the setup. This is what we saw on the back of the box. I skipped a page. So touch about the game board, catastrophe coins. It's laid out quite nice. I like the dispersion of pictures. Like here we go again, more of that. Um, the, the coloring and stuff of it is really, really nice, isn't it? It is very shiny indeed. What else we got? So it seems to be highlighting certain things in particular colors, always helpful. Go all the way down. We're almost at the end. So it's not a very big rule book. It's good and it's not crammed full of stuff. There's how the end of the game scoring is. Oh, there's a special version for two players. I'm always baffled by that with things and then on the back there's like a piece of a journal entry so not as useful as having some kind of reminders on the back but still it's a rule book down all right next ooh tokens how many sheets of these are there one there's two of these um pop oil punch board 1a so obviously we have money and then there are these tokens and some fish same on both yeah they pop out really easy it's nice sturdy cardboard I really like the colouring. I think this red is, looks really good. It's a really good shade of red. So there we go. So you have an idea what the cardboard's like. A little bit of popping. Well, that balance. And then, okay. The Piazza de la Resistance. I don't know enough French to be able to say that. Okay, how big is the board? Ah, it's a long board. Okay, so we'll start on the left. We'll work our way over. My camera is not that big. So... Um, the first thing we're going for is obviously this must be the scoreboard tracker where your rosettes go to keep her fire going. Fair enough. Um, here looks like a place you might want to put huts and things. There's all sorts of stuff here on the board that I don't fully understand. Um, there's also another like a life tracker along the top here. I expected the board to be bigger, but I guess we're going to be doing most of the stuff um, ourselves, you know, between cards and items, and that we're really using the board just kind of as a reminder for. Um, all the kind of exchange rates or what you can do. So this one is turning dice into meeples, it looks like. Fish, uh, meeples into dice, fish. So yeah, um, and then there's this lovely little notebook over here. I think it's very pretty. It's lovely and sturdy and it's made of something quite nice. It's kind of that um, waxy stuff, the durable thing, but it's very, it's nice to the touch. Um, so yeah, and it folds neatly away. Woo. And so yeah, a long board. That's the one I haven't seen in a while. And yeah, there's nothing on the back. Cool, so that seems to be everything that was in the box. 
what do you guys think? I think this looks quite interesting, actually. Um, now, getting everything back in will be the fun bit. Well, not really. There's, there's quite a big box for all the stuff that's in it. I wonder, did it need to be so big? I guess it did just for the, the map. And I'll find the rest of the dice later, I swear. <laughs> and there we go. Yeah, so what did you think? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Why not tell me um, what you thought of this unboxing? So you've been watching Board Game Inquisition. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, why not think about doing something nice like, you know, subscribing or to the channel or liking this video or telling a friend because, you know, the more people that come to the channel, the better and the more board games I can show people. And so until next time, um, hopefully I'll run into you when I do another unboxing. Until then, take care. Bye bye.